Hey Geography peeps! So, as you know, I went to Turkey for the Turkey episode. However, uh, if you know me, I have a very distinct travel style. I don't like to just stick in one place, I kind of like to hop around. And you know, uh, Greece and Bulgaria were right there. So I decided to kind of go on like a little bit of a side mission. See, one unique thing is that parts of Greece and Bulgaria and Turkey are part of a very distinct historical region known as Thrace. Despite being separated amongst three different countries, the people here have very similar cultural tropes amongst each other. And uh, I kind of want to see it for myself. And you know, of course, I'm on YouTube and when I do stuff, I record it and document it and put it on YouTube because you know, logic. So that's pretty much what I did. So without further ado, here's the Thrace race. Let's go! Alright, so uh, not much of an intro needed, I just kind of explained everything to you. So let's just kind of jump into it with free public domain music that I got from the YouTube creator tool. I don't know, let's go with something a little bit acoustic chill hoppy. I know is <laughs> So last night was pretty crazy. Arrived in Istanbul, drove to Edirne. We found this place pretty cool. Now we go to Bulgaria. All right. So the oh, geez, the beeping. So today, uh, I actually have to drive because uh, when you cross the Bulgarian border, you have to have an IDP. Ege does not have one. And I have to drive stick shift. Oh my gosh. You, you excited, mom? I'm gonna close my eyes. <laughs> okay. Driving stick shift. Yes. Here, watch me going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this is so oh, hard. Oh no, you messed up the transmission, man. Oh, what am I gonna this do? This is so hard, oh. So here's the deal. In order to get to Bulgaria from Edirne, you have two options. Take the E80 highway to the border of Bulgaria, close to the tri-point border with Greece at the entrance at the town of Capitan Andrevo. Or you can take the smaller, lesser used Urtekoi road that enters into Castanias, Greece. Then you have to hook back up into Bulgaria Bulgaria on the E85 highway entering at Capitan Petko. Keep in mind that although Bulgaria and Greece are both EU, Bulgaria is not Schengen, so you still need to have your passport stamped at the crossing. Now here's the dilemma. We were leaving at the end of August, which is the worst time of the year for border crossings. Why? Because this was the time that all the Turkish diaspora were finishing their summer vacations back in the homeland and would disperse back to their jobs, homes, or schools all across Europe. This means that both border crossings would be super jammed, but especially the Capitan Andrevo side, so we decided to opt for the greece bulgaria area strategy. As expected, traffic was heavy. So it's been about three hours we've been waiting. That's the line to get into Greece. Now here's the sad thing. This is actually faster than the Bulgarian border. Apparently that side takes eight hours. Even this donkey pulled cart was going faster than us. There was one cool little thing along the roadside though. Everywhere in Thrace, sunflowers. Pretty cool mom, right? Yeah, it's pretty. <laughs> Finally, after three and a half hours, we made it. Bulgaria! Right in the middle of the city of ancient Roman ruins. No entry fee, you just 
walk in. But first, we had to check into this amazing hotel that was actually sponsored to us from Mike and Maria, our subscribers. I want to give a huge thanks to Mike and Maria Green for sponsoring this hotel room. It's amazing in Plovdiv, Bulgaria. It has a huge patio. Check it out, mom is crashing here. Each room has its own bathroom. So Mike and Maria wrote this really cool book called Cracking Up the Mask. It's about Thracian culture. It's a fictional book, but it's awesome. Check it out. You can go to travelthroughtimebooks.com. Great stuff. Mike and Maria, you guys are awesome. Thank you. After that, it was time to head out and meet my Bulgarian subscribers. My Bulgarian subscribers. <laughs> and, and one Turk. Plovdiv is one of the oldest cities in Europe. You'll notice while walking down King Alexander Street in the Central District that the entire area is actually built above the ancient stadium of Philippopolis. Literally everywhere you go in the central part of the city, you find ancient ruins and columns in the open air, and it's literally just ingrained and meshed within the civil structure of the city. Very few cities have an ambiance like this. Yana, you explain. Yana, what is this? It's a Roman stadium. With Roman, so right? It's the end of the Roman stadium. We can see only this one. So that this is the part we were just at. Yeah, there are like two uncovered This is all part, underground. Like... So the whole city is on top yeah. of a Roman. Yeah, on a Roman city. <laughs> and yeah. you just preserved it. Yeah. What, what we have it? the Roman Empire, the Ottoman Empire over there. Ottoman Empire. <laughs> and... Bulgaria. And Bulgaria. <laughs> From there, the subscribers wanted to take me to Old Town Plovdiv with Bulgarian Renaissance architecture dating back to the 1800s with the objective to revive Bulgarian nationalism. These buildings are distinctly characterized by their upside down tapered structure with upper levels that protrude wider than the lower ones. It's a really quirky yet intriguing design that you really can't find emulated across the world. So this is the gossip room. So usually during the Bulgarian Renaissance, women used to gather there and look at what's happening on the street and gossip about it. Oh, look what the, the baker is doing. Oh, shame. If you find this guy, don't take a picture or video in front of him. You do it in back of him. And then he, uh, he draws you like that. But the best part was when we walked up to the top of the hill of Old Town. Yeah. Just look at all that. What? Roman ruin. Modern city. <laughs> My favorite part though was actually this part when this drunk guy asked Ege for a cigarette. Drunken Bulgarian guy talking to a Turkish guy. <laughs> Thankfully, Geography Pristo kind of diffused the situation. I wouldn't give Bulgaria away for nothing, you know. Mm. I would always live here. I would always live, especially in Plovdiv. I'm very proud of Plovdiv. So, so what is a Bulgarian person? So I think that Bulgarian people, in general, they, they'll tell you what they think they want. Spare any words. <laughs> I was going to say that they are pretty controversial, even with themselves sometimes. Uh huh. Yeah. Just controversial. So a lot of, lot of contrast. Bulgarians are a very unique people group. If you ask them what they identify as, they'll say that they acknowledge that there's a Slavic and Eastern Orthodox influence within their culture. However, they themselves, on an ethnic sense, do not identify as Slavs. Most of them will just say that they are Bulgarian. And to some extent, some people might actually even take it further and say that they are descended from the ancient Bulgars, which were actually a Thracian slash Turkic group that migrated into the area a long time ago. In any case, after that, we went to Sar Simeon Park. This place blew my mind away. It had so many amazing amazing things like fountains and merry-go-rounds, old men in public playing chess, which was pretty unexpected because from a surface level based on research, I always kind of pictured Bulgaria as this kind of cold, utilitarian, blocky looking type of place. But here I am in the most colorful, quirky, thriving city I've ever seen in such a long time. Clearly something is going on in Bulgaria and it's a good thing. After that, I had to go grocery shopping and of course my Bulgarian subscribers were definitely down to help me. One thing you gotta know, Bulgaria is known for its dairy. Oh, yeah. this one. Okay. What this means recommend? that this is an original product, and this means Bulgarian national standard. Okay. This is like the best friend of friend of Rakia. Okay. If you want to be fancy, though, this is what you need. This is special selection. Burgas. Uh, Burgas 63. So okay. Burgas 63. So of course, yeah, I bought it. What are we doing? We're sipping Burgas Rakia. Don't do a shot. I really want to. Okay, I'll just sip it. Don't show the Rakia. You don't want to do that. Ooh! <laughs> There's like a wood flavor to it. Taste is of okay. a burning house in the woods. We're <laughs> burning house in the woods! You can hear the people screaming in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit. 
I told you. <laughs> That's good. This one's more softer than yesterday. Yeah. The next morning, we had to get some banitsa and ayran. These are staples of the Bulgarian diet. You can get it sweet or savory with cheese in it. There's a few other things I forgot to mention. Like they have a huge canal that they built specifically for rowing, or there's like a huge abandoned stadium. But overall, Bulgaria just blew my mind away, and my mom loved it too. Finally, it was time to leave Bulgaria and head out to Greece. From Plovdiv, we would head south through the incredibly twisty, windy Rodopi Mountains on the Bulgaria 5 Greece 23 Highway, all the way to the Aegean coast, and from there, straight shot to Alexandropoli. Driving in Greece. Look at all these olive trees. Nobody pick it up. I be there to pick you up. Just call me Flab. Here in Alexandropolis, this is the weirdest mural ever. Doctor Strange, England, uh, America, baseball with a penguin and of uh, the flag. <laughs> what? Why is it in Greece? What is a Greek person? Mm, if he talks fast, like an Italian person, and he uses his hands a lot. They sleep during the noon. A lot. <laughs> okay. They love the tzatziki sauce here. Yeah? Tzatziki, okay. Never mention the name Macedonia. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What else? And you'll see a lot of cats here. A lot of cats. A lot of cats, yeah. yeah. So Alexandropolis is the largest city in Greece's western Thrace region, and it's an important port and commerce hub. It's a relatively newer city that was settled around the 1800s in the Ottoman times. Ege kept telling me that this city was so similar to Izmir and where he came from. The buildings, the architecture, the old men playing board games and cafes. And it was crazy when he met Mike. The two of them got along really well and they understood a lot of cultural references. And they even noticed that a lot of the words they speak are the exact same. Also, most of the swear words. But besides that after that while we were just walking in public geography Giannis recognized me and we hung out we are basically the same because group. my grandfather came from Thessaloniki <laughs> really yeah like, the only thing that's different is the language and the religion uh, I think. and the language is not even a thing anymore in the 21st century yeah. no. so it's just government and religion to a degree and I think an example of how Greek Turkish friendship could evolve yeah like yeah, if we chill. if we chill. come totally, man. together we will this is my man right here <laughs> what is a Greek person a Greek person is uh, somebody who wants to enjoy life and he I think he only or she only lives during the summer only lives during the summer. <laughs> of course, afterwards, we had to get the staple of Greece, souvlaki. And then finally, mom wanted to come out and hang out with us. We decided to go to a taverna, an outdoor restaurant. Lots of good food. We actually had Greek-style octopus. And Giannis recommended that we try this thing called sporo. Finally, it was time to go to what else? the beach. All along the coast of Alexandropolis, you find these rocky, red, cliffy coasts where you can either hike on them or you can swim underneath them and discover a multitude of these small little hidden caves. All right, we found a little secret, you want me to film here? A little secret beach. Uh, I think I got this, let's see. Let's go underwater. Jeez. So we discovered this little secret cave Alexandropolis with mom. You like the beach, mom? Oh. It's okay? Finally, we had to leave, and it was just so crazy seeing how well Ege and Mike got together. <laughs> We're giving Mike a Turkish raka for Mr. Mike. <laughs> it's the best. It's the Thank you. It's the golden series. <laughs> Thank you for visiting my city. 
Saying our goodbyes, we finally decided to leave Greece and head back to Turkey. So that's where the video is gonna end because technically the Anatolian Peninsula is not part of Thrace. So I can't include it in the Thrace race video, but I will continue the Izmir and Istanbul stuff on Patreon because I promised my Patreon patrons that I would give them exclusive content. So, so if you're on Patreon, get ready for it. If you're not part of Patreon, feel free to join it. I almost never promote Patreon on this channel. It's weird, I should, but. So that was the video, hope you guys liked it. Fun stuff, stay tuned for the next trip. Stay cool, stay tuned.